Okay, to continue our study of the properties of matter, we're going to focus a little bit about uh, a little bit on chemical changes this time. So the title of uh, this video is Chemical Reaction Indicators. So chemical change, chemical reaction um, can sometimes be hard to determine that an actual chemical change has taken place, but there are some uh, there are some signs, there are some 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 observable um, uh, indicators that uh, will help you to know when a chemical change or a chemical reaction has taken place. So uh, let's talk about what a chemical change is. So the very basic definition would be when matter, uh, there's a change in matter when a substance or substances become something else. So it's not magic. There's really something happening. There's a rearranging of, of the molecules within the substance. But you, you can't see that, right? So let's look at this example of a chemical reaction. So if you start out with sodium, which is this really beautiful um, silver gray metal, it's pretty soft, and, um, and it's obviously a solid. And then you have this really weird looking greenish yellow gas in the flask here. Now that is chlorine gas, and chlorine is poisonous. Chlorine gas is poisonous. Okay, but those two substances, the sodium and the chlorine, will react to form sodium chloride or table salt, something that's not poisonous, something that's not a metal, and um, it's something that we use a lot in our everyday life. Totally different properties from the two substances that, that reacted to form it. So that is a chemical change or a chemical reaction. All right, one uh, indicator that tells us that a chemical change has taken place is the formation of a precipitate. The precipitate, that's a kind of a difficult word, but if you think of the word precipitation, which is um, falling out of the sky, right? So you have, you have water, some form of water falling out of the sky, that's precipitation. So in this case, if you take two liquids, for example, milk and lemon juice, and you combine them, they will react to form a solid that if you look at the picture on the right here, these bottles, there's, there's actually seems to be a solid kind of separating out of the liquid. So anytime you have that solid precipitate forming, that's an indication that a chemical change has occurred. Okay, another indicator would be gas production. Now, it's really great if that substance is in a liquid form and you can see those bubbles come up. So you know that there's a gas that's being produced. Um, but sometimes it's not in a liquid. But one example of that happening would be the process of photosynthesis in plants. So they take carbon dioxide that they absorb from the air around them, from the atmosphere around them, and they take water that comes up through their roots, and then in their leaves, typically in their leaves mainly, they, it goes through a chemical reaction, the carbon dioxide in water, to produce a sugar that the plant uses for its energy, for its food source, and it also produces oxygen, great for us because then that's released out into the atmosphere around the plants and then we can do it so that uh, we definitely know that there is a chemical reaction taking taking place because we have absolutely new substances that are formed and one of them just happens to be a gas okay uh, another indicator that a chemical change has taken place would be color change you have a nice fresh banana that you buy and you leave it on the counter and you forget to eat it for a few days and what starts happening starts getting those really ugly brown and black spots it's not very appealing it starts to smell a little bit so when you see that color change and and also that change in smell too you know that it's not so fresh anymore and that's an indication that a chemical change has happened within the banana itself it's decomposing basically okay uh, another indicator that a chemical change has occurred would be a change in energy. And there are two types. Uh, the first is exothermic. Now the word root exo means to, to go out or to exit, right? So in this case, uh, when the reaction occurs, the change occurs, it actually releases energy. Sometimes it's thermal energy, sometimes it's light energy. Think about fireworks. Okay, so when fireworks explode, they're releasing a lot of thermal energy, but you also see these beautiful lights, right? Okay, so um, another indication that there has been an exothermic 
energy change in the reaction would be that uh, you know if you have a thermometer and you're measuring the temperature the actual temperature of the substances that that you're putting together are going up so maybe they're really ice cold when you put them together but if you watch the thermometer there the, it's actually going to be an increase in temperature okay and then the, the opposite of that often happens as well so if you have a chemical reaction that takes place or you have some kind of a, a uh, chemical change um, and energy is absorbed it takes thermal energy from its surroundings okay and when that happens there is a drop in temperature so if you had a thermometer in those substances even if they were warmer room temperature when they started once you put them together they start reacting you're gonna see the temperature on the thermometer actually go down so those are a few indicators that there's a chemical change happening. We will be practicing um, applying these uh, ideas in our next lab on physical changes and chemical changes. So I hope this has been helpful. I hope you've been able to add some information to your notes on the properties of matter. Thanks a lot.